Okay, this is the video for writing your paper for all of my social and political science classes. I've also posted a PDF file on Moodle for all of my classes that is a compiled guide to writing your paper that much of this video is coming from, so you will definitely want to read that as well. You can even follow along with that as we go through the video. This uh, guide to writing your paper is broken down into three major categories. Following instructions, improving your syntax, which is your structure of your sentences, how you actually write your, your text, and then improving the quality of your content. Perhaps the most important thing of the paper is the, the content and the quality of it. Now, first of all, let's get a very important point down as far as what the purpose of the paper is in any of the social and political science classes. The point, of course, is to demonstrate your writing skills, which is extremely important in college and will be very important for the rest of your career. So on top of that, the, the type of writing that we're doing for, this, for these types of classes is, is analytical writing of a particular topic. So one of the biggest things that I'm trying to impart in the writing assignments is the, how to use credible sources to describe what it is that you have learned about a topic from quite a bit of reading. Reading is the uh, basis of our knowledge, and so this is what the purpose of the paper is, is for you to read a lot about that topic and then tell me what you've learned about that topic. So we have to be very important. This paper, none of the papers in the social and political science classes are a forum for you to spout your opinions or to tell me what you think or express your beliefs. Keep your opinions out of it. This is for analyzing a topic based on what you've learned from the readings. You wipe your opinions uh, slate there clean so that you can start building on learning something about this topic. And that brings up a good question. What is critical analysis? A lot of students that when you ask them that question, they may respond and say, oh yeah, well that's, that's me uh, telling you, I read an article and then I tell you what I think about it. Well, no, that's not the point of critical analysis. The critical analysis is for you to read that article and then tell me what the author Thinks. You're supposed to be telling me what the author found out from, in some cases, years and years of study and research and analysis that he's been able to come up with this information that is important to our learning in the social and political science fields. So this is extremely important that this is what we're uh, focusing on is what we're going to accomplish in our writing. And good point that I bring up in all of my classes is something called sociological imagination. It could be called other things, but basically what you're doing using sociological imagination is to step back and look at something from the perspective of an, obje of a, an objective observer. Step back from your culture. Step back from your state. Step back from your country. Step back from the world and look at the world from the perspective of an objective observer. Uh, I, I even like to say step back from humanity and look at humans from an objective viewpoint. Those humans, what a curious bunch they are. Now, following instructions is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, get used to it. You're going to be following instructions, not just for the rest of college, but for the rest of your life. So you have to follow along. This is for various... Uh, important reasons of the consistency and evaluation. And uh, if you don't follow the instructions, you're not going to make an A. It's that simple. If I, if I get a paper from somebody who obviously it doesn't look like that they have remembered this video or read the syllabus, then uh, that would exclude them from an A immediately. So keep note of what the, uh, the font is, what the style is, the size of the font, one inch margins, double spacing, for a reason. Make sure that you provide at least the minimum number of pages. In my classes, typically uh, six to eight pages is, is somewhat of a typical range there. 
If you, another point is that if you do not give me at least the minimum number of pages, it will not make an A. It's that simple. Now you got to be careful about over padding it and providing more pages than the maximum is required because that could uh, literally uh, backfire on you. Some students feel like that if they throw more pages at me, that might improve their chances of getting an A, but that's not the point because editing is a very vital part of your writing skill. Every single assignment that you will ever have will have some limit to it, and you will have to be able to work to be more concise to get the most useful and interesting information into the space that you are allotted. So that is part of your writing skill. And what I've seen is that students in the past who had padded their paper with more pages than was necessary, it did seem to be a lot of it was just that padding and it could have been trimmed out. Also be sure to use the correct number of references that are shown on the syllabus and that includes both the uh, legitimate news sources as well as the peer-reviewed academic sources and again be careful with padding as well. Again the more sources that you read and use for your paper the better your paper is going to be. I cannot stress that enough. The more you read and the more academic sources that you use to write your paper, the better your paper will be. But be careful. Don't just throw all the sources on there that you looked up even though they weren't used in the paper. So what you need to do is make sure that the references that are shown on your reference page or your bibliography, though we'll call that one and the same here, just make sure you show only those that are used in the writing of your paper. Now the quality of your syntax the thing that you can do first to uh, help yourself on that is to proofread, 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 proofread it out loud, proofread it to somebody else if you need to, then proofread it again. Cannot stress this enough. If you proofread it several times, you will catch the typos. You will catch mistakes. You will even catch that clumsy syntax that I'm going to be talking about here a little bit. So proofread it several times and you will actually be able to to catch some of these things that I'm talking about. So one of the things you want to be careful about, is it a complete sentence? Proofreading will uh, verify that. You want to make sure that you use the proper punctuation. We'll talk about commas here again here in a minute, but punctuation actually provides those inflections and those nuances in those sentences that make it more readable. You want your writing to make sense. It's readable, something readable. It's hard to actually define what that means, but I know it as soon as I start reading it. I've had papers to where I've, it's taken me a long time to get through a sentence because I have to read the sentence several times just to figure out what that sentence is saying. So make sure that it makes sense. It's complete. It has the proper punctuation that provides that flow to your narrative. You can sense that as you're proofreading. It doesn't have that flow that makes it more readable. Be careful with wordiness. You don't, you're not trying to impress me with your flowery prose here. This is not the point of the paper. You are trying to be fairly concise in giving me the most useful, most interesting information that you have found in your readings. And so this is an analytical paper, not a creative writing paper. So uh, that's where pretty big difference. So you, you want to uh, don't write a sentence that's three times longer than it needs to because you're just wrapping yourself around with all the words that you're trying to throw in there. That's not necessary. I can tell when somebody who's read some good information and is trying to explain that to me clearly in an interesting manner. And I can see that. Another very important thing during the uh, writing of your paper, do not cut and paste anything from any of your sources. That is, uh, not only is that illegal, that's plagiarism, but it's also lazy. You want to paraphrase the writing in your own words. And even when you're using quotes, you want to use quotes sparingly. You do not want to cut and paste large chunks of quotes out of an article and slap it into your paper. That, um, that's a, a clear sign of a student that's trying to fill up space without writing to do it. So it's lazy writing. It's also not 
acceptable in uh, this type of writing. So do not cut and paste anything. And that includes the references, because I'll talk about the references here in a minute. It's a very simple format. You can write those out very simply. And once again, proofread, proofread, proofread. Can't stress that enough. That is going to help you to catch mistakes, make it more readable. Now let's talk about the most important part of your paper, and that's the quality of your content. So again, as I've said before, the purpose is to provide interesting, unbiased, useful information from credible sources. All right, and the credible sources could be legitimate news sources. There's lots of them out there that we can find. And there's uh, the probably the most important part of your sources will be the peer-reviewed academic journals, which have, there's thousands of those out there, depending on what topic you're writing about. And I've also posted another video on all my classes that's a, a relatively quick overview of why these peer-reviewed journals are so important and how to find them on the library databases. So what you're doing here is using these legitimate news sources, these, these credible social political analysis uh, journals to examine this topic. So what you want to do is to be descriptive. You don't want to just talk around it or just kind of uh, think about it. You want to use the information that you have found and be descriptive, be interesting. Give me useful, interesting details. Provide me some useful and interesting examples that makes your paper more informative. That's that's the sign of a good paper is that I'm reading and I'm going, wow, this is really interesting stuff. Instead of just talking about it with what you think or what you speculate, you want to uh, show some data every now and then. Instead of just saying that, yeah, most people just, just don't do that. Well, instead of speculating about that, find a survey that actually gives you some backup information that says, yeah, a poll shows that most people don't even do this or do that. This is very interesting information, useful, and it uh, takes your paper to the next level rather than just talking about it. You want to be informative. That's what you're trying to do. You're not trying to impress me, again, with any kind of flowery prose. You're trying to inform the reader as to what you learned about that topic from credible sources. So you're examining the issue. You're trying to get to the whys, the what fors, the how comes, the who's who's. That's what you're trying to get to, the causes, the effects, what's causing this, what's causing that, why, what for. What perhaps are the social costs? Talked about this probably already in the class. A social cost is literally a cost to society. What are the social costs of this issue or even the policies that we have in place? What are they? How are people getting around it? For example, what are the unanticipated consequences of policy that are causing problems or, create, or creating even more social costs as a result of those policies that are in place or the, or the lack of policy that's in place that uh, could be addressing this problem, this issue that you are investigating? So some common pitfalls to watch out for, and I've touched on a few of them already. You want to proofread, determine if a comma helps your readability. I've gone through some papers that literally did not have one single comma in the entire paper, and you have no idea how difficult that paper is to read. So proofread it and check for that flow. Check where it's normal to pause when you're when you're speaking that to somebody, you want that readability to uh, come across as well. Break the narrative up into digestible paragraphs, because if you don't, it's going to be very uh, kind of difficult reading because you're not really clear that this is all just being mashed together. If you break up your narrative clearly into chunks that have the same thought, then you go to the next chunk of thought. Breaking them up into paragraphs improves that readability. Once again, you want to avoid these broad generalizations or these blanket statements that just come out of the clear blue that 
that basically have stuff that you've heard, what you think about a topic, but they are just completely unstantiated type uh, statements. So you want to avoid that type of writing. You don't want to just talk about stuff. That, that comes across very clearly as being uh, very vague, perhaps even uh, jargonistic, that people are just talking about what they've heard or thought about it. And it's very clear very quickly that that person is not really using good, useful, substantial sources to describe what this is about. So don't, don't just speculate about stuff. Read about it and tell me what you've learned. Very important thing as far as writing an unbiased, objective, analytical paper is to avoid the normative rhetoric of what you think how this should be or how horrible this is or what this is what uh, this is how it ought to be. You know, this is something that all humans have the urge to do, to insert those little side comments, to let me tell you, oh, that's, that's terrible or that's bad. You know, the urge to editorialize, avoid that. That distracts from an interesting, useful paper. Avoid the hyperbole of making these, these broad, general, uh, exclamatory type statements that uh, the vast majority of times aren't even true anyway. And they're just used for uh, you know, pretty much just uh, purposes that are detracting from the uh, analytical purpose of the paper. So let's talk a little bit about the structure of the paper. In any class, you're going to have typically an introduction, which should be no more than about two pages of your typical six to eight page paper. You don't want to spend so much time literally introducing the subject, what you're going to do, typically explain the topic, what the issue is, why it's important to even be talking about it. You might want to give some recap of some history as to how we got here. This is a very important part of this analytical type paper. You don't want to just start the paper and slap me right in the middle of something. I'm going, where did this come from? How did we get here? You want to be logical. You want to make sense as to bring me up to date. Bring the reader up to date in a logical manner as to what happened, as to how we got here. You want to do that briefly, clearly, and concisely so that uh, you can set the foundation of what we're going to talk about as far as the body of the paper, of what we're going to address and, and why, what are the problems we're going to be dealing with. And so this is where you can use your credible news sources to really kind of explain what the topic is about because that's how we generally know about it. We read about it in the news or we see it on the, the uh, legitimate news programs on the television or the internet and that's how we get most of our information about these topics. So you can use those sources to explain why you're going to write about this topic. The body of your paper is by far the most important. So typically the rest of your paper, except for perhaps the last page or so, is going to be the analysis of this topic. What is the problem and why? What are the consequences? What are the social costs? What you're doing here for the body of your paper is that you're using these credible academic sources to explain and describe what they are examining. Why are they examining? What are they measuring? What are they finding as these academic sources, these scholars, these analysts, researchers, scientists, as they are examining this, what are they finding? What are they measuring and what are they finding as far as how it relates to this problem that you have chosen to write about? Write about? And obviously, probably one of the most important parts of this entire assignment is to learn how to use peer-reviewed academic journals. This is where scientific information gets published. It's different from the news. The news tells us what's happening. The peer-reviewed academic journals are where the studies get published, where the scientific method is used. And I've already talked a little bit about the scientific method. I've also got another video on how to access these peer-reviewed academic journals. Finally, your paper of course, not, this is not including the bibliography page, but the, uh, the last part of your main paper is going to be the summary or the conclusion. This is where you're going to recap, generally, 
what you have found, what the general theme is of the readings that you can tie together. Now here's the chance where you can use some insight as what you have been able to gather from these readings and these findings. And again, this is not the point for you to editorialize or to tell what you think or let those opinions kick back in that you've been holding off for the last uh, five pages or six pages or whatever. You're still using insight as to what you have learned from these readings. This is how we actually learn and make progress, is that we gather this very credible knowledge, and then we start making the connections with these. And then, at some point, we may actually be able to put some of our own theories out there into the world because of what we've read, what we've learned, and what we've put together to take it to the next level. So are there any consistent recommendations that have shown results from the, the papers that you have read or that, that you have been able to surmise that seems to be a, a reasonable path to pursue in order to address this problem. And then in some cases, you might even want to point out some areas that could be ripe for future research down the road. And in some classes, it may be yours, some classes I actually require an additional one or two page assignment that really has the student put together a just a very general research plan, a research proposal on how they might actually study that topic further if they were assigned or, or hired or given a grant to do that. So here's some basic reminders. Don't forget the title of your course because don't stray off course as far as when you're addressing this topic. If, you're, if your course is uh, international relations, well, then you don't want to focus in on U.S. domestic policy. You want to keep in mind what the title of the course is, and that's going to be the general direction of your paper. And again, I, I want you to be for the assignment to be an analyst, not an activist. Now that, again, has nothing to do at all with me or you getting out there in the world and being an activist on any particular issue. Uh, that's, that's great, but I would even recommend that you learn a lot about it before you become an activist. The more you learn and understand about a topic, the more able you're going to be to uh, propose for solutions and reforms in order to uh, to alleviate those social costs. But for the purpose of this assignment, stay analytical. Don't get off to the activist role. And uh, that's going to be distracting, and that's going to take away from objective analysis. So again, avoid your opinions. Keep them out of it. Avoid that urge to just throw in those little or editorialized comments of telling me what you think. And very important, do not turn it in late, because if it's turned in late, it will not make an A. Bottom line, it will not make an A if it's turned in late. Now, the, the final part of the structure of your paper is the reference page, or what we could call the bibliography. And so keep in mind on the syllabus there, if for a six to eight page paper, you're probably going to have at least uh, uh, six to seven or eight uh, references required for that paper. So you're, you're using legitimate, credible news sources and peer-reviewed academic journals. Again, I've already mentioned before, I'm posting a video on uh, Moodle that you can uh, look at as far as how to access those. You want to avoid, as far as your references goes, avoid the, uh, the talking head blocks or the op-ed columns. Uh, those are, they serve their purpose, but you are focusing on legitimate news, the actual source focusing on peer-reviewed studies. So all of this is just extra to that. So avoid the partisan opinionators. Boy, you don't need to, to source dictionaries to define words and things like that. Wikipedia, which of course is what's going to pop up at the top of almost all of our Google searches. And keep in mind, as, as you may have already noticed on the video that I talked about peer-reviewed journals, you cannot find the peer-reviewed journal articles on Google. You have to go through the library databases. 
However, if you're just looking for general information on it, Wikipedia is not a bad place to start looking, but it is not the source. Wikipedia is just a clearinghouse where people are compiling that information, and Wikipedia does do a fairly good job of trying to show you where that actual source came from. That's where you would actually go to to provide your source for your paper. Now, how to cite your source in the text, I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible because the bulk of your writing is going to be paraphrasing from the articles that you read. So after your, after, this is, uh, there's two basic ways to cite your source in the text, and they're both pretty much the same. But uh, paraphrasing from your source, let's just say you're writing a paragraph and it's coming from this source, and uh, by the time you get to the end of that little paragraph or into that little passage, and then you'd say, oh, well, that came from, for example, Smith 2016. And then I would go to your reference page at the end of your paper, and I would look in alphabetical order, and I could see who Smith was and what that article was. And I'm, I'm covered. So that's really all I need. And uh, so as far as any quotes from your source, as I said before, you want to uh, use quotes sparingly. You want to use those to drive home a point. But if you do have a, a quote, what you want to do is basically the same thing is that you will actually put a comma here and put what page that this actual quote came from. When you're quoting from your from your source, you'll, you will also add the page number that that quote came from as well. All right, so uh, your bibliography, here's some examples of an article from, from a peer-reviewed journal. It's going to be a very simple format. You're going to have the author's name, last name first, period. Then you're going to have the date, the year, period. And then you're going to have, in quotations, you're going to have the title of that article, followed by a period. And then most importantly, in italics, you're going to have the title of that journal because that's your source. That's where it came from. That's why it's in italics. And this is the volume and the issue and the page numbers that that article was in in that journal. So that's the standard format. If you follow that throughout, you will be in good shape. You want it to be single-spaced, concise, alphabetical order. If you're quoting, or excuse me, if you're using a book as your reference, the format is very similar. You've got your authors and your lead author, last name first, and then these are followed by a period, and then the date it was published, period, and then italics, the title of the book, because that's what's being published. The only difference here with the book is that you're following it by the city and the publisher that published the book. So very similar format all the way through. Author, year, title, journal, followed by volume, issue, page numbers. Formats the same all the way through. Edit and volume, a little bit different. That's if you've got a book with lots of different articles in it. You use the authors of that article. When that article was, uh, when that book was published again, the title of that article in the book, and then that, the pages of which that's in the book, and then the book that that's in. So just one extra piece of information is required for that for an edited volume. If you're coming straight from a, de a, a website, I'm going to allow you to be a little bit more flexible here, but the bottom line is that you got to put it first who provided that article. In many cases, it's going to be a name of a person right here who might have uh, contributed that information, but once again, the year that that information was published on that website, the title of that uh, page, and then this is, where, this is the only place where you'll actually need a web link because you will not need a web link for your peer-reviewed academic journal because it's located in the library database. We will not need a web link for that. But if you are coming straight from a legitimate website, then you would put when you accessed it there at the end of it as well. If you're looking for a legitimate news source from the internet, it's very similar. you got last name first, followed by the date that that article was posted on the website. Here's the actual title of that article, and here's the website that posted it right there. 
very logical order. And of course, that's all followed by the web link. And so this is the only other time that you'll actually need to show the web link on your bibliography source there and then when it was accessed. So keep in mind that these the the page of your bibliography, those are going to be in alphabetical order, single spaced for clarity, and be sure to use the proper format. So you want it to look very clear and very organized. Here's a just a sample of some alphabetical sources taken out of a, a bibliography here. And as you can see, last name first, year, title of the book, city and publisher. Here's a um, peer review journal, last name, year, the uh, title of the article. And then what we have here is the uh, journal in, in uh, italics. So you can see the uh, very clear, organized manner in which the uh, sources are put. So once again, the bottom line, you want to just keep, keep everything simple. Read a lot. Read a whole lot. And then tell me what you've learned. That's the basic theme of the, the writing assignments. So be sure to read the syllabus and read that writing guide that I've posted on Moodle more than once so that you can uh, be some of these these ideas will start sinking in as you're writing your paper and it will uh, improve your analytical your assignment there.